bioimpedance analysis. I love this stuff. Well proven scientifically. We've been using it for over 20 years. You get so much information so easily about your health. It measures some very important biomarkers. Make sure that when you come in to do the BIA, you're not wearing pantyhose, no food one hour before testing, and no extreme exercise before we test. And no caffeine and no alcohol. Also make sure you're well hydrated. We'll get a better and more accurate test. One of the first things that show up is the phase angle. It's an overall GPA of your overall health. It's a very ac accurate assessment of oxidative stress. Really aging stress on the cell, nutritional status. If your health is going down, the phase angle goes down. When your health is doing good, your phase angle goes up. It's, it's one of those overall measurements to allow the doctors to see if you're responding to the therapeutic modalities, to your lifestyle changes, Keep in mind, as we age, it does drift downward a bit. Our goal is to keep you above 5. The theoretical perfect is 10, but it's real unrealistic. But why not shoot for it? 10 would be great. It's a very, very important tool that seems to be the hallmark of your overall health trend. The other thing we look at is muscle mass. Muscle mass is very important biomarker of health. It's what gives us energy. It's what balances your hormones. It's what is partially responsible for sugar regulation. It soaks up toxins. It's part of your immune system. It is part of your strength, of course. And yes, it makes you look good. So muscle mass responds not only to being fit athletically, to exercise. It also a big responder to what's happening inside your body. For example, we use it for Crohn's ulcerative colitis. It's an accurate measurement. If you have a flare-up of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, your body will use muscle as fuel to help fight it. If your patient is very inflamed or ill, muscle mass will always go down simply because muscle is used as fuel for part of the immune system and part of the metabolism. It's also a measurement of how well you can absorb protein. If you have malabsorption syndrome or anything going on in the gut that may impede absorption, muscle mass will go down. Or simply it just doesn't respond to exercise like you think it should. With a female, we'd like to see that number to be at or about 35% muscle mass. Anything over 38%, you're in athletic territory. That's a good place to be. It doesn't mean you have better health. But between 35 and 38 should be your goal. Anything under 30% is very bad. It's difficult to maintain health, energy, hormones. So let's work on getting that number up. Another thing that we can measure here is the metabolic rate. It's the rate that your metabolism burns calories at rest over 24-hour period. So this number, of course, goes up when you exercise. This number, again, the higher the better. Who doesn't want energy? Who doesn't want a fast metabolism? Low metabolism is an indicator of low muscle mass, thyroid issues, adrenal problems, other metabolic disorders. Again, we want that number to be at least 1,500 to 1,800. Higher is better. Once you get down to 1,200 or so, we're looking at some serious metabolic issues that need to be addressed. Body fat. Most For most women, this is your enemy. There is an ideal territory, however. Less is not always better. You need to be at least 18%. Athletes can go a little lower than that to 15%, but anything less than 15%, it starts to hurt immune function. You get sick more often. There's no reserves. Hormones start going all over. So 15 is the bare minimum. When it's over 30% body fat, it becomes very inflammatory. It becomes angry. We like to call it angry fat. It is always spewing out in these inflammatory molecules full time. It affects you like an anchor. 
It will burden you and pull you down. You do not want to be over 30%. The ideal is between 18 and 23%. And where your fat is stored is, of course, very important as well. Now, if you're storing fat mainly in the belly, you are looking at some adrenal or sugar issues. If it's in the hips, it's more estrogen issues. So if it's all over, you're just looking at you're eating too much and not exercising enough or overall metabolic disorders. So let's repeat that. Fat, very important. It's not just for how you look. It's a very important component of health. Total body water. This is another biomarker that we measure. It is the most common nutritional deficiency I have found in the office. Total body water needs to be at least over 50%. Ideally, it should be at 60 to 65%. When water drops below 50%, joint health suffers, synovial fluid suffers, Skin health suffers, brain becomes foggy, you become less sharp, and overall organ function declines, including the mitochondrial function in the cell, which then goes back to the other marker, which decreases your phase angle. So water is cheap. Let's ingest it. Let's get it over 50%. If you have been less than 50% for a long time, it takes two to three months to get back to that water, at least three months. And so you will urinate most of it out, but little by little, you'll start to get it over over 50%. A very important subcomponent of total body water is how much water you have inside cells and how much you have outside cells. So intracellular water, cells are a little bit like grapes. Think of the intracellular water as the water inside of a grape. And if you start losing that intracellular water, that grape starts to look more like a raisin. And all of the functions within that cell start to decline precipitously. The mitochondria function goes down, so energy production goes down. The function of the cell declines. Let's say it's a liver cell. Your detoxification ability goes way down. Your ability to regulate sugar goes way down. Your ability to regulate hormones goes way down. All these things is what the liver does. So you want more water inside the cell than outside of the cell. When water moves outside, it indicates inflammation, toxicity, poor health, edema. It's really a very powerful way to measure how much toxins you have. You want more water that's intracellular and less water outside of the cell. The ideal ratio is about 60% inside and 40% outside. I watch this number very carefully at the spa because wherever the water is flowing to, whether it's inside or outside, this is which way the health is trending. I cannot think of a more accurate measurement that is more sensitive for inflammation. This is a power one, folks. So I've just touched the surface on BAA. There's many things else it measures as well. These are all things that are important as well, but really gets into some really hard science. So I've covered the ones that you're going to see on your bioimpedance analysis that we do here at the office. This is a wonderful test. It's easy to do, and it gives you a great, it gives you a great biomarker to make sure which way your lifestyle and your health is trending. So this is a power one, all right? If you'd like more, you can come in, give us a call at the spa, 772-223-5885. But I encourage you to come on in, check it out. It's, it's absolutely life-changing. So thanks a lot.